most people think I'm ugly. I don't know if lighting will <laughs> change that. <laughs> yeah, probably not. Uh, welcome to That's Good Sports Podcast. I am here live with Patient Zero, Will Keys, uh, who lives in Sacramento, California. He is sick right now, which you yep. will hear. And the uh, coronavirus was found five minutes from where Will lives. Yeah, five minutes, literally uh, two blocks behind me that way. I'm, I'm pointing to it right now. Uh, I don't know if that's really what patient zero means, uh, but well, I may be the most famous person to contract the virus. I'm, I might be the first celebrity. Yeah. Uh, so that's kind sure. of a celebrity. <laughs> kind celebrity. Of a I am. A, I, I've been mentioned in Forbes magazine, their online publication. Yes, you have. <laughs> this podcast has. Yeah. Um, I will say, I, That's no joke. I said patient zero because, um, I think when did you start to get sick? A couple of days ago? Yeah. Two days ago. Two days ago. The news about them missing the uh, coronavirus patient was yesterday. So just based on that timeline, even though it's very unlikely, you could technically be patient zero it could be in America. Yeah. Also because you were, uh, just got back from China. So <laughs> yeah, I ever, you know, I did spend the, the president's day weekend in China. Um, as you do every president's day. Yeah. I mean, most of it was spent flying there and then kind of getting off and walking around the airport, like Tom Hanks in that movie terminal and then getting on a plane and flying back. But it, it's great to experience other cultures and, uh, other countries, Cinnabons and Orange Julius's. Yeah, there's so much to see uh, across the sea, if you will. Yep, um, like that Weezer song. <laughs> um, <laughs> I think, creepy. I honestly think you have a 50-50 chance of having it. I and might have a 50-50 chance of survival at this point. No, I think the survival rate is much higher than that. Uh, I think... The reason that coronavirus is a big problem in terms of not being able to contain it is because most people only experience mild symptoms and the death rate for people your age is like 0.2%. Um, and it's mostly killing percentage wise old people. Obviously anybody with different ailments or bad immune systems, who knows how bad it could really get. Uh, but I'm just going to proceed like you have already had it. Okay. On the other hand, if we keep teasing that I might die any week and this could every episode could potentially be our last episode. Yeah. Uh, I think we'll get a, a spike in ratings here. So your untimely death could do more for my show <laughs> than I ever could. And you ever could helping me write. <laughs> it would be the, it would be the biggest thing to happen to this, to this podcast since Forbes magazine. Yes. I mean, do I miss Will Keys? Yeah, but if he didn't die, <laughs> HBO would not have picked up my show. So That's right. That's right. And now, yeah. would I like to live to see at least the first episode of this yeah. show on yeah. the home box office channel? Sure. Yeah, uh, because... Sometimes you can't have your cake and eat it too. Right. Because everybody knows that um, in the afterlife... In heaven, you do not get HBO. No, you do not get premium cable. No, 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 no. You do it's, get AMC, but uh, obviously uh, there's commercial breaks. God kind of skipped out on the premium cable package. Yeah, he, he's not paying for that. Um, no, absolutely not. You know how many fucking people are up there? <laughs> I just want my HBO. Well, you're gonna have, has HBO. Yeah, you're going to have to go time. down to hell. You and want to skin a max. <laughs> Oh, God bless Skinamax. Uh, you know what else sounds like hell right now? The NFL Combine? The media room at the NFL <laughs> Combine. Because uh, today, this just this morning, J.P. Finley of NBC Sports reported that they ran out of Diet Pepsi in the media room, and it, it caused 
quite the ruckus, um, <clears throat> quite the stir, a possible mutiny. Uh, one person threw a tantrum. Um, I, I just want to – who do you think that person was, first of all? Throwing a tan- tantrum about uh, Diet Coke? The, no, 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 Diet Pepsi. Diet Pepsi. Kind of a weird move, but I guess maybe – Tantrum um, about Diet Pepsi. Ooh. Pepsi, Coke, contracts, et cetera. Uh, I want to say Darren Rovell. Yes. <laughs> I, I can't even venture a guess other than that. <laughs> uh, I'm waiting for Adam Schefter to confirm that it was, in fact, Darren Ravel. Yeah. Who threw a hissy fit because they ran out of his precious diet Pepsi. I would say Tony Grassi, but, <laughs> you know, he's, <laughs> yeah. he's been suspended already for a different uh, tantrum. Yeah, I mean, let's let's talk about that for a second. Wait, what's really, what's okay. worse, calling Baker Mayfield a fucking midget or not having yeah. Diet Pepsi? Uh, if you're a media I, member, I mean, I like I like a good Diet Pepsi every now and then. Oh, <laughs> uh, dude, I I couldn't tell you the last time I had a Diet Pepsi. Oh, you, you know what? I don't drink Diet Pepsi. I take it back. I'll, if I'm gonna drink it, I'll drink a Diet Coke. But uh, yeah, I don't. So does. So I just don't drink it unless yeah. it's a mixed drink on a a whim. Well, peop, yeah, I mean, people want to know the origin story behind me and LaCroix is LaCroix really filled the void that soda left when I, when I really gave Switched, up soda. Gave off, gave off the, got off the, one of the worst things you can put in your body. And, and transferred to one of the best. That's right. <laughs> The unknown besides, side effects of drinking lots of flavored water. Besides what I've been drinking recently, which is Dayquil, large amounts. Yeah, coronavirus, Dayquil. Yeah, I should have taken NyQuil before this podcast. I would have really, I would have really got things going. I wonder if NyQuil's like uh, Ambien. If you stay awake through it, you get like real weird. Oh, yeah, and you can like tweet uh, – Tweet controversial stuff and blame it on your NyQuil. Yeah, you could be Roseanne. <laughs> yeah, basically. Yeah, I tweet something borderline racist, uh, and then you kick me off of the show. And um, well, I guess they never replaced Roseanne, so it's just you after that. No, yeah. you actually get John Goodman to. Yeah, I was gonna say. I just need Dan Connor. Need Dan yeah. Connor. Welcome to the uh, what? Do you, what would you call it? The the Kernas. That sounds like Corona already. The Kernas. I've got it on, it's on the mind. It's on the mind. Um, okay, so I just want to say about that Tony Tony Grassi thing that it is really hilarious to call someone who's like four or five inches taller than you a fucking midget. Yeah, I think objectively that's uh, that's really funny, and based on the just the humor of the whole situation. I think um, he shouldn't have been suspended for that just because he's shorter. Yeah. Well, I think maybe like it had to be some sort of uh, punishment that fits the crime type thing, you know? Right. Right. Uh, He should, he should have all of his like bowls and plates and kitchen appliances moved to the top shelf. There we go. And he has to live that way for a, for a year, for an entire year. Yeah, yeah, a year, I think. A I think year. that's fair. Yeah. Where he has to use a stool, a step stool, to get anything he needs in his home. Possibly even a ladder. Yeah, that's a better I punishment. Think ta- I think we'd take the step stool and then give him a ladder. I think that's uh, – I think we just solved it right there. I think we should tweet at um, ESPN Cleveland – and Tony Grassi and say, we've, we've mediated this solution successfully and uh, we've come to an agreement here. Yeah, here's what I thought was kind of weird about the whole situation because like, um, so you're, you're supposed to say, you're, well, you're not supposed to, <laughs> one, use the word fucking when you're, you're on air. Uh, thank God we don't have to worry about that. Right. But also the, ter- the, the word midget is offensive to little people okay yes but at what point do you get to say the m-word does tony grassi get the m-word pass 
Yeah, I don't know. I think you got as a guy, I think you got to be like shorter than five foot. I don't know. Uh, but, okay. But, five sevens technically, it's it's average, right? Or yeah, five, I would nine. say it's pretty average. I would say average. I mean, I just I just watched Eyes Wide Shut with Tom Cruise last night, and that man's definitely uh, five seven at the very most. I just got measured, and uh, I'm closer yeah. to five eight than I thought I was. So. Talk about a good week for me. Um, But what what I thought was weird is people were censoring the word fucking in their headlines, but still using midget. (laughs) Like like Bleacher Report had that. Uh, I saw it in a couple places and I didn't get like enough time to really like think about this and craft some more jokes about it in the episode, but uh, I just thought that was kind of bizarre. I was like, well, what is he getting more in trouble for? Not that it really matters. Yeah. But, um, well, okay, but the whole um, way that he got caught, I guess, was for ESPN Cleveland, f- for some reason they have like a paid subscriber right. uh, base. That, that was a surprise that people paid the, for yeah. that. <laughs> one of the perks of that is you get to listen to the show between in between commercial, commercial breaks. breaks. Yeah. Right. So if it's like a, a premium kind of benefit there, it's not, not regulated by the FCC, I don't think. No. <clears throat> well, yeah, I mean, no. And it's. So he's allowed to say fucking. Yeah. And he's allowed to say midget, but it's just a matter of, you know. Yeah. Technically, the, we're allowed to say whatever, <laughs> whatever we want. Uh, you well, I mean, if you do... say if you say it like on uh, if you say fucking on NBC, they will find you. Well, the FCC will find you. Yeah, you'll get fined, but um, yeah, if you say it in the middle of the day, of course. Right, like during uh, Ellen. If you said it on Ellen, yeah. that would be bad. Yeah. Although that's not live. Uh, no, I guess not. I guess not. But you could say it anyway. Really, I think. The rule should be if Ellen finds it offensive, then it's a problem. If not, you're cool. I'm worried that Ellen is going to find too many things. Offensive. I don't think so. I think her, her, her roots are in comedy. So, Well, a lot of people's roots are in comedy. Technically, our roots are in comedy. and uh, Technically, we have no roots. Spell. I wish okay. we had a daytime talk show. That'd be nice. <laughs> uh, that's he, nice what this is. Okay, what we're going to get into is uh, some more clarity on the CBA shit. Yeah. Tom Brady probably, really probably leaving New England. But the first thing I wanted to talk about is Andy Dalton, apparently right now, is a hot name on the trade market. Highly sought after, according to at least one headline I saw. Um if let's say Bill Belichick acquires Andy Dalton in a trade and supposedly the Bengals can get up to a second rounder for him, would, the, that. would Bill Belichick winning a Super Bowl with Andy Dalton be a sufficient blow to Tom Brady's legacy? Yeah, of course. I mean, people already bring up the Matt Castle 11-5 and five season um, as kind right. of a blow. Tom um, Brady's legacy. So yeah, I, I, I do think it um, it would make a difference, and that's not that's to say like Andy to know. Dalton is a bad quarterback or anything. I think he'd do well with the Patriots. He he might be actually he probably is an upgrade at this point. Um, <laughs> and I don't say that like with any facetiousness. At this point in their careers, Andy Dalton most likely an upgrade. Make a little. Uh, do a little work on the offense, spruce it up a little bit, get a couple guys back. I think you've got a, a good-looking unit there in New England with uh, Andy Dalton. And, you know, furthermore, I think his his hair would pop a little bit better with those navy blue uniforms than mm. they did in Cincinnati, obviously. Cause, you know, it was like camouflage in, in Cincinnati. Yeah. Didn't really stand out. So, I want yeah, I want to see those, those hot, hot blue uniforms hot with blue that uh, fiery red hair. I would just I would love to have to see uh, Patriots fans r- rally behind Andy Dalton 
That well, would make me very happy. Question. Yeah. I mean, Patriots fans deify Tom Brady so much. And uh, I'm not the first person to posit this question. I got this from Dave Damashek uh, on the NFL Network. But his question is kind of like, you know, would the Patriots root against their own team for like a year to prove that like Brady was as important as they think he is? Or, you know, would they just be happy with uh, another dominant season? Yeah, I know if Tom Brady came to Denver, I would probably root against Denver for a year. Not publicly, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to see him succeed as a Bronco. So I would like them to win in spite of him, like Peyton Manning mm, in 2015. I think that's the best case scenario. And well, then and then we re-signed Brock Osweiler and put him in late in the season. <laughs> if he replaced if Brock Osweiler replaced Tom Brady, say week eleven, and then went on to win yeah. in the playoffs as Brock Osweiler while Brady was on the bench, then I would I could live with that. Yeah. Uh, uh, okay. So works. Tom Brady, more likely out of New England than not, as stated by Jeff Darlington, um, <laughs> as you put on the hit cool morning show, Get Up. It uh, is. Which, it's a hit cool morning show. Yeah, which made it's me called laugh. Get Up. Get Up on ESPN, kids. You got to get up. Get up. Get up you with see. your sports. Get up. And then yeah, it's like, I wonder if they – I've never actually watched that show. No, I've only seen, like, clips from it when – Rex yeah. Ryan says something crazy or whatever. I think that's what it's meant for. Yeah, all of that stuff is. Uh, so here's my question here. Tom Brady, let's just say he's definitely leaving now. Okay. What would be worse, seeing him go to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers with the riches he would have to work with on offense or seeing him go to the Indianapolis Colts? I mean, I think he's got riches to work with in either situation. Well, yeah. He's got with, a fantastic with the, offensive line in Indy. Um, he's got a few weapons like T.Y. Hilton. I think, I think T.Y. Hilton might get a little slowed down with Brady just because it would take away some of the, of the deep routes that he's so good at. Um, I think he'd be a better fit offensively in Tampa Bay just because Mike Evans and uh, – Chris Godwin, and depending on if they resign Brashad Perryman, all good kind of possession receivers that can do a lot of stuff. Um, they would definitely, you know, like we said earlier, they'd find a white guy to put in the slot. I think either team would. Uh, and then they'd get themselves a pass catching running back, which the Colts do have a good one. Um, Naheem Hines. Naheem Hines. Right? Yeah. Naheem. And then uh, let Marlon Mack do some I guess, and- I guess what I meant, though, in terms of worse is because I think he could win in either place. Yes. But what kind of slap in the face to Peyton Manning would it be if the Colts signed Tom Brady late in his career? That would be a slap in the face. That would be a little a little too weird for me. And I would yeah. rather see Tampa. Because I would, you know. Like if, Pey- I, if Tom Brady won a Super Bowl as the Colts quarterback, that would that's be the same amount of Super Bowls Peyton Manning won for them. You know what I mean? Like, that would be fucking yeah. bizarre. And it would really – that would be a big blow to Peyton Manning's uh, – I don't think it would happen regardless. Um, no, I'm just – this is what if. However, yeah. I, I I think Tom Brady could have a lot of success with Tampa Bay because there's so many weapons there. Uh, I think if he goes there, he fears challenges uh, because it's – you just got to go to Tampa Bay and not throw interceptions. That's all you got to fucking do, and they're going to be a really well, good team. Okay, let's clarify success here. I don't think success is getting to or winning the Super Bowl. I think success is, like, making the playoffs. And I don't think it gets very far in the playoffs with either team necessarily. Mm. I don't know. Unless I think, they really, really have a great situation around him. I think Tampa Bay could be that. that. I think that's the case in New England. I think they, they'll have a very good defense next year, but – Yeah, they should. Anyway, I'm very excited for this quarterback free agency period because – I want this to hurry up. This Tom Brady thing has gone on too long for me now. 
Well, yeah, it's like every week is he's probably going to leave New England. He's probably a little bit more going to leave New England. He's definitely headed back to New England. Yeah, Patriots are going set anyway. to make him an offer. The Patriots Tom have Brady not talked to him. His house, bought a new house next door. Um, Tom, Tom Brady, Brady has twenty houses. Tom Pepsi. Brady bought a thousand tiny homes and put them <laughs> in every major U.S. city. Tom Brady lets Antonio Brown sleep in between him and Giselle after he has a nightmare. Tom Brady wonders why oh, Antonio yes, yeah. Brown posts videos of himself holding a guitar that he clearly can't play. Tom Brady gets off on pushing his children off of cliffs. Whoa. That and was... then makes out with them to keep them from crying. Tom Brady <laughs> is Tom Brady. Tom Have Brady you... is Tom Brady. Have you Coming. seen any of the videos Antonio Brown has where he's holding guitar, the guitar? No. <laughs> he's like jamming to his own music and then he just got like the guitar in his hand, but he's not, he's clearly not playing it. Oh yeah. Yeah. I have seen that. <laughs> it is, I, I'm like, I know I've probably done that before, like listening to a song and have a guitar that I can't play. And I just, yeah. I don't know, but like I would, <laughs> I, uh, it's just bizarre. It is. <laughs> it's a strange one. I mean, he, it seems like he's, starting to figure things out but then again yeah, who knows something crazy could happen tomorrow and that could uh you know reset the whole who thing knows? okay so last week we started to talk about the cba neither of us had enough information to talk about it uh intelligently and but now you uh, do i think we wasted a lot of people's time i yes. mean that could be said for any podcast we do but we know a lot more now uh, so I wanted to talk a little bit more about it because it's really the only football thing we discuss. Uh, but it's heading to a vote by, by all the players. And if it gets a majority vote there, it will be passed. J.J. Watt, Russell Wilson, Aaron Rodgers have all come out and spoken against it, saying to vote no, um, which kind of sounds like guys who have $100 million contracts just don't want to work an extra week. Um, yeah, that's what that sounds like, but I learned more about it today because like we weren't, uh, Pat McAfee talked about this, how like the players weren't talking about what they didn't like about it. So we only kind of got what the NFL was putting out as the, the benefits of it and players weren't being specific about why they wanted to vote no on it. So the big thing is most of these players don't want a 17 game season. Um, that's the big thing because the NFL is going to loosen up on weed testing. They're only going to test for weed during a two week period right before uh, training camp. Um, and they've upped the positive amount you can test for. They decided after they met last week to remove the $250,000 cap for 17th game checks for players who are under a contract that would have to play on that. Um, they've talked about a $5 billion shift to the players over the next 10 years, which is a bit misleading because that is a lot of money, but over 10 years, split, 500 between, million a year. split right. between all the players, it's actually not like as much as it, it, it sounds like. But the reason this is probably going to pass is because 60% of the league makes the league minimum. And the NFL right. is going to up the lead, the rookie raised minimum by a hundred thousand dollars in 2020, and then another fifty thousand dollar increase in 2021, and then forty five thousand dollars every year after. Um, which uh, the rookie minimum would be six hundred and forty five thousand in the year 2021. Eight years after, with all those forty five thousand dollar increases is $360,000, which would make the rookie minimum by the end of this CBA uh, a little over a million dollars. Yeah. And for yeah. – so the NFL smartly has targeted the, the players making the least amount of money and incentivized them to vote yes on this thing, which is right. probably why it's going to pass the way it is right now. And I think that's, um, I think that's smart because no one feels bad for – 
Aaron Rodgers or no. Russell Wilson or J.J. Watt or the guys, you know, the guys that came out publicly and said they don't like it because they're never going to have to worry about money. Um, I think the people that we want to see helped out in the next CBA are the guys that are going to make the the minimum salary and uh, the uh, injury or performance or whatever don't stick around for very long. Uh, but, you know, they have an extra 200000 uh, however many dollars have you, uh, in your pocket. That's a big, that's a big difference. And, and that uh, can keep a lot of players, hopefully, from struggling financially uh, if they can stick around long enough. And um, obviously, too, like, it's nice to have the XFL around for guys that, you know, are, are kind of on the roster bubble um, and, ca- and can't quite stick around with an NFL team to still be able to play football at, at a professional level. Um, not for the same kind of money, but to right. keep their skills sharp and then kind of get back in a training camp. But, yeah, no, I think things are trending positively for um, for the guys kind of on the margins, and that's that's really well, what yeah. this is about. Even the, the – because it's not just the rookie minimums that increase every year. It's the uh, – like, because every, every year you play, your minimum goes up, right? So right. the other minimum salaries are going to go up 90000 in 2020, then eighty to 105000 in 2021, and then they also get the same 45000 more per year. So it's like a guy who is, you know, making the vet minimum – on his second contract that, you know, for whatever reason he had to take minimums for all that shit, those players are going to benefit as well. Uh, so it's not even like the, the, the young guys who aren't making money that are going to probably vote yes for it. It's probably a lot of the guys who have been in the league but are still on that bottom tier of, you know, how much money they're making that are going to be fans of this. Um, but I did read like this new CBA makes it much player, much harder for players to hold out, uh, which for fans, yeah. that's another thing most fans don't give a, a shit about. No, I mean, I think most fans will like that idea, but it, it takes away some leverage from the players. But I, I do think that players have generally, you know, star players at least have a lot more leverage than teams do. Yeah. In negotiations. Star players do. Um, but the, the thing that I've, I found interesting in there is if a player holds out or misses training camp and they have like specific parameters, but uh, it can cost him a year of his free agency eligibility which is kind of crazy. Um, yeah, I mean, I think to some extent, like, you kind of – I don't know. It, you have to, like – maybe the best option is, like, arbitration, like in the MLB, where the, the team and the player get in front of a neutral party and they come to some yeah. sort of salary agreement within the process of – a week or a few days and you don't have really, you don't really have to deal with a holdout. Um, I don't know if that's like, I don't know if baseball fans think that's like a particularly, um, I don't know, wise solution. Uh, I'm not as up on, you know, the financial side of baseball as I am on the NFL, but uh, it feels like there's a better way to do these things. Yeah. I think like the big thing, and I'm pretty sure, maybe I'm wrong on this, on this, but it's the the NFL is is offering better like health plans for former players, right? Not lifetime coverage. I think it's coverage based on every year you played in the NFL, um, something like that. But they're offering better coverage for those you know former players um, and guys who will be former players. But I think like that's one of the big ones that <coughs> was discussed, but I've not, I haven't heard a lot about like the, the lifetime health, health coverage for players. Right. Um, 
I think guaranteed contracts would be a big thing. Uh, the NF, like teams have moved closer to doing more guaranteed money, and we know more about that. But NFL contracts, everybody knows, is like it's mostly like a lot of bullshit until you just see what the guaranteed salary number is. Right, um, right, and when uh, the team can opt out. Right. Um, Essentially. So, <clears throat> I don't know. I feel like there are probably areas the players could win in, and they will get what's the forty-eight and a half percent share of revenue going to players. Uh, they said fifty percent is unrealistic, so why not get forty-nine and a half? <laughs> I don't know. I think that's fair. There's a lot of people behind the scenes that work very, very hard. Um, and just because it's 48 and a half for the players doesn't mean it's uh, 51 and a half for the owners. No, not for the owners. They have the, the team costs to cover. They have all that other shit. Um, right. No, it's... Uh, they're still making a couple hundred million honestly, every year. I generally do not feel as bad for the players as they want us to. I don't like uh, Aaron Rodgers was, you know, one of his things is that he wants more free time in the off season for players. And, uh, it, what, like, are you a school teacher? Do you get summer break off? You're making, uh, $35 million a year. I, I think, um, it's reasonable to be, you know, working eight hours a day <laughs> for well, most of the year. How often and then do they you work get to during... retire and then do whatever you want for the rest of your life? They have like they have to report to workouts. What like in April? April in May? In yeah. June? There's like a, a week or two workout thing in either April, May, or both June, and then. Yeah. Once training camp gets going in July, and then there's voluntary shit. Um, I thought that was pretty funny too, <laughs> because it, and mostly because it's a quarterback saying that, and like the one player who should be working the most during the off season is your quarterback, like, yeah. <laughs> as, even more specifically, an aging quarterback, right? Like, that's why maybe you know. Uh, you looked at somebody like Peyton Manning or Tom Brady, they spend their off season fine tuning their mechanics, getting, uh, holding like their own passing things with receivers to work on their shit yeah. uh, outside of what they're mandated to do. And that's typically when those guys, uh, as they get older, stay, stay sharp. And one thing that it's felt like Aaron Rodgers <laughs> doesn't want to do is any of that shit because he trusts his ability too much. And as he gets yeah, older, mean, that's going to – could bite him in the ass. If you want some extra free time, uh, you know, I know you, how you can get like five weeks off. Just don't make the playoffs. Fuck yeah. That's <laughs> – you can go on a trip to Europe in that time. Yeah, which quarterback – I think Philip Rivers has benefited from that quite a bit. Uh, oh, definitely. I'm trying to think of Matthew Stafford. Stafford for sure. Maximizes I mean, money. Never, never, never has to play in the postseason. Yeah. Um, that's uh, that's the life. I mean, really I think is. the ideal is you want to at least make it to the Super Bowl once, and then just kind of chill yeah. for the rest of your career. Yeah, you know, maybe you win it. You <laughs> You're talking like about Joe, Joe Flacco. <laughs> Uh, pretty much, pretty much. Joe Flacco had the perfect career. Uh, Joe Flacco, who else kind of like fits that mold? I'm trying to think. Aaron Rodgers like, getting there. <laughs> they had a nice playoff run this time. Yeah, I mean, Aaron Rodgers and Drew Brees and <laughs> Drew Brees. Yeah, Basically, Drew getting to the Super Bowl, the Super Bowls, is still really hard. That's why we hate the fucking Patriots. Uh, it's real tough. Uh, speaking of, and I didn't put this in the rundown, but it's worth talking about. So you have uh, teams that made the Super Bowl. The Kansas City Chiefs are going to franchise tag Chris Jones. Oh, yeah, I saw that. Defensive tackle. Killing uh, our dreams. 
they could still tag him and trade him um, or negotiate something long term. But yeah. this is a weird move because they don't have a lot of money to to play around with. Yeah, and they're going they're going to have less once they sign Patrick Mahomes. They're gonna have a lot less. Yeah, I mean I get you don't let a guy like Chris Jones get away um if you can. Uh, if you can help it. it looks like the Broncos are on the path to sign Derek Wolf, which probably puts Shelby Harris on the outs. So I get it that I don't know what the Chiefs will do. Like maybe they just try to hold on to Chris Jones for one more season because right. they're they're definitely in that that championship window. If they can keep that defense together, which played its best football at the end of the season, like they'll be in a, a decent spot. Did they extend Tyreek Hill too? Yes. So Hill's under contract, Kelsey's under contract. Um, yeah, pretty much. Um, I think they still have to pay either Schwartz or Fisher on the offensive line. Oh, okay. That's really good, so. Yeah, Schwartz is, he's turned into one of the best, like, right tackles in the game. But yeah, also, borderline Hall of Famer. Also, offensive lines look a lot better when your quarterback's uh, pretty good. It's one it's thing true. I've learned. <laughs> one thing I've definitely learned. Yes. Uh, the Drew uh, Lock effect, as it's called. Yeah. Oh, that – so somebody tweeted um, black quarterbacks are taking over the NFL. <laughs> and then it, yeah, had a, it had a picture of uh, Patrick Mahomes, Lamar, Lamar Jackson, Jackson, Deshaun Watson, and Drew Locke. And yeah. uh, I thought that was like – I thought it was really funny. Uh, it looks like it was, a it, was Chief, it was a Chiefs fan who did it too. And so I retweeted it. And, of course, I got, like, three people with just scathing sort of – all white guys, too, by the way. <laughs> yeah. All, all white guys getting, like, really offended that, uh, one, somebody would be happy about uh, the success of black quarterbacks. <laughs> I don't know what they're complaining about. I think they, they should have to play in the CFL for three years before they can <laughs> – Start they're like, for, okay. if you if you said white quarterbacks were taking over the NFL, people would be throwing up, you know, their hands or I don't know what the fuck they're saying. It's like, first of all, you missed the joke there. Like, <laughs> yeah, Drew Locke is, is a white dude. Yeah, uh, like, he was a white dude who uh, knows how to rap. <laughs> yeah, it's like it, they're saying – it's like a compliment I mean, saying Drew Locke's cool, basically. And basically, the jig. Basically, the joke of the tweet was removing Russell Wilson and <laughs> replacing him with Drew Locke. <laughs> right. Like, I don't know. It's just because one of those Drew things. Drew is blacker than Russell Wilson. I think and that's a fair thing to say at this point. I guess I – Especially like, if you've seen Russell Wilson's hair recently. <laughs> um, when, when, like, I th had the thought. I was like, if you retweet this, there's going to be somebody who complains about it. And I, yeah. I just had one second where I thought about it. It's it funny. I'm going to fucking retweet things that I think are interesting or funny. Uh, and I'll uh, listen to, you know, whoever complain about it. But um, I thought it was good. If you are offended by that tweet or the joke behind that tweet, please sound off in the comments below. Don't actually. Yeah. I don't care what you think. Get offended. Get more offended about more things. That will make you happy in life. The only person I care about in the comment section – well, actually, I care about you all, but the person I care about most is the guy who calls me Will Gay 6 in <laughs> every comment section. I fucking love that guy, and I love his commitment. <laughs> Will Gay 6. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, well, uh, so – uh, this is the last thing and we're going to be done. Um, but okay. I'm working on doing a thing for, uh, like a charity thing to raise money for Alzheimer's disease. And, uh, this dude who makes like these giant Lego sculptures, he made the Steve Harvey one that Gronk spiked and broke on new year's. Uh, -huh. uh like he built that 
and he built one for me a while ago. And then he had the idea to build the Tom Brady head that I could smash. And so uh, I've been talking to him. We're going to do it. And like, I'll post something to make it official because I want to make like a, a goal for the Alzheimer's association, which my sister works for. So it's like official and the money goes straight there. And I want to try to raise like a lot of money. And once I do, I'm going to smash the fucking Tom Brady head. But uh, the guy who makes them uh, asked me, he said he would donate a hundred dollars if, cause he's a chiefs fan. If you would say something positive about the chiefs. Look, I think Alzheimer's is a very serious disease. <laughs> However, <laughs> there are some lines I'm not willing to cross. So and I think he said he would even do 200 if you wore uh, Patrick Mahomes' jersey and said something positive. I'll have if to get the you details, can, If you can supply me with the Patrick Mahomes jersey, uh, then yes, I'll do it, of course. And then we can, uh, you can do a, a – uh, a video where after the Chiefs lose one game, you can go burn the Patrick Mahomes jersey like you're a, a Chiefs fan. <laughs> I'm I'm down with it all. I think for you spiking the Brady head, I think first of all, we need to complete we need to use it as a football and complete a deep pass into the end zone Ooh. and then spike it. Interesting. Which adds the layer of tension. You know, will you catch it? Will you drop it? Will it will it be destroyed there? I think that adds a whole new layer to it. Yeah, we'll try to make it cool for sure. And you have to pledge. Like, if you do catch it, you know, everybody donates an additional, you know, $10. Yeah. We'll figure it out. But I like this idea. Anyway, uh, that's today's podcast. Um, I think after free agency, well, maybe after the draft. I don't know. We're going to have to probably go to every other week. We got the NFL Combine uh, starting tonight on prime time. Oh, it hasn't – well, they're starting to air all the shit tonight. Yeah. Everybody's been there all week, right? But yeah, but happening. now they're, like, doing the drills and stuff. Mm. Dude, this – like, maybe we already talked about this, but the Combine to me is one of the most boring fucking things on earth. Oh, yeah, it sucks. I don't – I can't – I can't force myself to watch – watch it the only thing that's like mildly interesting is the quarterbacks doing the throwing drills yeah that's fair enough and like the like seeing like the guys who are expected to run really fast 40s run a 40 like yeah i just like to see like the next day once they've all run it and they're like these are the guys who had the three fastest times this quarterback was really fucking slow Right. Uh, it's usually guy's... it's like Rich Eisen using a golf voice and being like, uh, and now uh, Tyreek Hill on the forty yard dash. Uh, that was fast. This wow, and, and we've got it clocked at an uh, unofficial four point two seconds. Yeah. You, the the combine has already peaked. Who is who's the guy? It who's, peaked who's, with who's dick uh, fell out? It peaked with the guy at Pepsi thing. <laughs> yeah. I forget who that was. Whose dick uh, fell out at the combine? That was the know. best. Uh, I'm just gonna Google whose dick fell out at the combine. Yeah, it's a. Well, let's see. Oh, it's Chris Jones. Chris Jones. <laughs> God damn it! I was gonna say it's somebody we know. Right. I was gonna say. Bra- I was like, maybe it was Bradley Jump. Nope. Chris Jones. Chris Jones. Big dick fell out of his pants at the combine. Just another uh, reason to pin, man. Yeah, combine was has never been as good since. No, <laughs> no, 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 no. It's good. It's downhill from there on out. Speaking of getting fined by the FCC, <laughs> <laughs> can't be showing, can't be hanging dong on the NFL Network. No, 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 no. All right, thanks for listening. See ya. Abrupt ending. Now.